In today's video, I'm going to show you two more ways, two more ways, two more ways you can animate with two more ways that you can animate with Blender's Grease Pencil. I'm Luciano and welcome to the adventures of Lollipop Man. This episode is sponsored by me. Use the code below to get 10% discount on any of my products. What's up everyone? After recording the previous video on animating in Grease Pencil, some people reminded me that there were even more ways that we can achieve this. So remember to like and subscribe and let's get on it. Here we have a brand new animation template and I'm going to go into draw mode and create a circle. Okay, more or less. So I'll just sculpt it a little bit so it looks more close to a circle. So you, so it's not super bad. And there we go. I'm gonna make sure that this key is in frame zero because that's where we're going to start. And I'm going to go duplicate it to frame 24 as that's gonna be my first and last frame. I'm going to go to frame 12 and duplicate it down and do the same, right? So now what I can do is I can go into any frames in between two keyframes and press Control E and I can get this interpolation, which is kind of like what you do with the breakdowner with the 3D rigs, right? So I can interpolate here and can say, for instance, I want this keyframe to be something like there. And then I can just like go maybe halfway or something like so and then control E again and do something like this and control E again and keep interpolating and by just moving the, the mouse across I, I'm getting that timing that I'm looking for right so here and then around there and so I can get that for some reason, that first frame still showing there. Let's see. Oh, it, it is there. So I can just go into multi-frame editing and I'm going to make sure I delete it. Right, there we go. So for some reason, it's still here too. And there we go. not too shabby, right? So for instance, now I could grab this drawing and do a squashed frame, right? Right. And then I could just go here and press Control E again, and then push it towards there. You can see the interpolation has a number and it's not like the breakdowner where a hundred is at that line. Just make sure you match wherever you feel like you need it, that's okay. 90% is good here. We can go back to edit mode and see this. Maybe that was too much, so I can do something like so. And here, I probably want to scale it the opposite way, right? And then here, same thing. Now I could delete this keyframe and press control E again and then use the interpolation to get something like what I want. The one bad thing is that sometimes I want to create an interpolated keyframe but it already has a keyframe so it doesn't let me. I wish maybe that could replace it because that's what you usually want to do. There we go. So this one, I'm just going to create another one there. Very, very tidy. So it's great because it also helps you create stuff like fine, uh, inter a little bit of interpolation very smoothly. So now I'll just duplicate this keyframes and then go to the middle one, scale minus one. And there we go. And now I can just go and fill in the blanks with the interpolation as well. Just make sure that the spacing is correct. If you screw up the spacing, that's on you.
right? It's relative to the rest of them. So you're going to see that the first part is on ones and the second part has ones and twos mixed up. So obviously this is a very simple example, but this interpolation type might help you get part of the way to where you want. And then you can always use tools like sculpting so you can actually get where you want faster. For this last one, you, you can create animation as well in another app like Procreate or Rough Animator or Photoshop, Krita, etc. And so once you do that, then as you can see here, I have a crappy animation done, right? It's just a few frames, but the cool thing is you can drag and drop it into Blender. Now that you have it here in your viewport, you select it and go object, trace image to grease pencil. And I'm going to make sure that here is sequence, turn policies black and, and that's it. So I'll press OK now. So we have this circle here, but if we move back, you don't see your animation because the animation result starts at the position of your time frame, time frame, header, frame, header, time thing, head, time, head, time, head, whatever. And so this animation, you can see that frame is actually this one. And so you move from there on and there you go. So I'm just going to bring in a new time dope sheet grease pencil and just shift my frames all the way over here. Now, as you can see, it traced more than like almost a hundred frames, actually exactly a hundred frames. And that's because if you select your empty image, you go there, the frames that it says to have is a hundred. So what you really want to do is refresh this first. So it actually grabs the actual length of the video and then you can trace it. Like if I now move this away and then go object trace, I'm actually going to put myself in the first frame. As you can see, trace image, but now we get this one, which does have only those 16 frames. And as you can see, it got traced in the same frame that we were starting. Right now there's a few glitches because my drawings weren't like closed here. As you can see here, there's a little gap and then in frame two as well, there's another gap there. And so in some cases I've gotten the result that this one doesn't have a fill, but in this case it does, but this one here does not have a fill. Let's make this a little bit more obvious. I'm just going to get rid of this guy here. I'm going to get rid of this guy here. And I'm going to select that layer. So you can see now that's okay. That's okay. 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 That one is empty. And so I'll just go to my trace, select my, my color, my background color, change to draw, select the, the fill area and done. If the hole is a little bit bigger, you can just change the leak size and then do the same. And there we go. And so we got my ball. So the one thing that this made slightly different from every other way that we've explored is that this one, if you go into edit mode, you actually traced everything. So it's not just one stroke with uh, a specific thickness to match this. So you got two different fills really. So in fact, you can turn this on and off, but if you go to the stroke one here and when you change the fill, you're changing that fill. You can probably get rid of its stroke and just work on that fill on the outside. And then the inside one, you can turn off the stroke and you get something more clean again, because this is Chris pencil, then you can start using your modifiers and other cool stuff. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit, get more comfortable with grease pencil and start doing some more art. I should start learning how to draw. Like if you like, subscribe and see me next time.